Ghost House for the Sega Master System, originally released as one of those Sega card things before eventually becoming a game cartridge. Ghost House is a simplistic side-scroller where you control a little boy trapped in a ghost house. Your main goal in Ghost House is to slay the five vampires, or Draculas as the game calls them, in the house and then find a magically spawning exit. The game spans six rounds, though there are actually only three unique levels for you to traverse, as the latter rounds just reuses the same levels and makes everything faster and tougher. In order to survive in Ghost House, you need to learn all the rules and traps that reside in its haunted halls. In order to fight a Dracula, you need to seek out its coffin, but to unlock a coffin you require a key that can be obtained by killing enemies. The fight with Dracula is a cluster and you'll need to time your hits properly, but your fists might not be adequate offense. So touch one of these candles to activate a trap that will shoot out a sword your way and then stomp on the sword to pick it up and use it as a temporary weapon. Once Dracula is slain, you could pick up its heart for a full health boost as well as obtaining a jewel that will lead you closer to salvation, but sometimes Dracula will come back to life and you'll have to finish the fight all over again. If you touch the lights in the ceiling, you could freeze time for a short period of time, though this can only be done a number of times per round. If you touch a genie lamp, you'll trigger a trap that will shoot an arrow your way. You could stomp on these arrows for points, and if you stomp on enough of them, you'll gain a brief period of invulnerability that will protect you from damage, Though make no mistake, this doesn't protect you from the game's ridiculous knockback. There are mystery boxes that can be collected for bonus points as well as a short health boost. There are doors and paintings that can be entered and warp you to another part of the level. Spider webs that will trap you if you jump into them, leaving you open to heavy damage and much in the tradition of games like Metroid or Simon's Quest, you'll have false floors and walls to throw you off your game. And that is Ghost House in a nutshell. Jesus Christ. Ghost House has a number of issues, some of which contribute to the overall difficulty and or frustration factor of the game. The most notable issue comes from the ridiculous knockback, which, fine, lots of old side-scrolling games have knockback, it's a trope of the genre, but the knockback here is so awful, covering a lot of distance, causing you to fall through ladders, sometimes to the lower floor, which is something you don't want to happen in the middle of a Dracula fight. And also no recovery period, which means it becomes very easy to get knocked back against a wall and trapped, which is often a recipe for a very short life. The lack of a recovery period means getting easily bounced around by Dracula during those aforementioned fights, which aren't helped by the constantly spawning bats and other traps that are easily enabled during these battles. What also doesn't help Ghost House is the somewhat sloppy collision detection. As mentioned, you could use your fists to fight off monsters and triggering a trap will enable you to grab a sword that is good for five hits. But you also have another weapon which happens to be your feet. Jumping on enemies is perhaps your most powerful tool, killing nearly every enemy in a single shot with the exception of Dracula. Though trying to land a successful hit is spotty at best, as your timing has to be perfect in order for the kill to take place, or else you just take damage. Thus, your best use for jumping on things would be for the swords and arrows that shoot your way, but even this can be problematic as sometimes it might seem you've landed on an arrow successfully, but it turns out you just took a hit, and that's not good, especially for a game that already poses a meaty challenge without these additional quibbles. Which is a bit of a shame because Ghost House on paper seems like a really neat game with a somewhat straightforward premise. While knockback and poor collision might be issues, control is not. Yes, the jump and attack buttons are unfortunately reversed in this regard. Yes, you could jump through ladders, take a big fall, and get hurt. However, controlling your character isn't much of an issue. You can move while in midair, your attacks come out quick and instantaneous, there's no noticeable lag in response time, and for a simple platformer where you have to jump and move around to avoid hazards, good control is key, and Ghost House certainly has good control. It's only a pity that it's about the only thing that works well in this game. Ghost House is a very simple looking game with some colorful graphics, some bland set pieces, and otherwise cute little characters. Every humanoid in this game looks a bit on the cute side, and that takes away from the gloomy atmosphere that clearly does not exist considering some of the gaudy color choices in the walls. It's not a bad looking game for its day and there isn't anything you can't make out that's indecipherable or anything of the sort. Just don't expect a visual masterpiece for a game that was originally released on one of those Sega card things because you can't really fit much on that format. At least that's my understanding of it. Only a couple melodies permeate throughout Ghost House, the haunting theme that plays on the title screen and during Dracula battles, as well as the regular tune that plays during the rest of the game. 
One tune is good by Master System standards, the other is repetitive, and I'll let you decide which is which because you could go either way. Sound effects are average Master System fare, nothing to write home about. Overall, Ghost House is a mixed bag of a side-scroller. On the one hand, I like the overall concept, the basic gameplay seems promising, the controls aren't too bad, there's a bit of a charm to its cute character designs, and once you get a grasp on how everything works in the game, there's a bit of fun to be had here. On the other hand, the knockback, poor collision detection, and somewhat short length, among other issues, can hinder one's enjoyment of Ghost House. There's just a lot of nagging quibbles you have to endure in order to really have fun with this game, but if you could do that, you'll find a somewhat challenging little game here that could be fun for a lark if you're so inclined. Otherwise, I'd steer clear of this one and go for something simpler and more straightforward. So in other words, just go for Flicky. I don't know if they made Flicky for the Master System. Now, you could get that on the Genesis and the various compilations, but... Uh, uh, yeah, so, so that was Ghost House on the Master System. The end.